In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. Hello, 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 and welcome to another, no, this is just not another. This is our 50th episode of live stream edition In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. Holy crap, Vic, you put up, all right, Vic's going to surprise me today. That graphic in itself says it all, folks. Uh, welcome to our 50th episode of In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. I am your host. And uh, today, well, I'll say it right off the bat. You know what I'm going to say. If you guys are watching um, on the YouTube official channel, thank you very much for doing that. Uh, please hit that subscribe button if this is your first time doing it, wherever that uh, sort of subscribe button may be. Vic will show it where it is. If you're listening to us on Facebook Live, uh, great. Stay there. Or make yourself on over to the YouTube official channel. And of course, if you're listening to us on Apple or Spotify or any of the audio podcasts, what are you doing? You want to see you want to see our guests today. All right. This is something you have to experience. I'm I'm just upset that we don't have uh, you know, scratch and sniff sort of TV technology yet. It's coming though, let me tell you. Um, well, what can I say? Today's episode, 50th easy peasy for me. I didn't have to barely do any research because you, the people, were in such demand to ask our guest a lot of questions that are, uh, a lot of the questions came from you, from you good people in the chat. You know, um, he is, all right. I will quote his Wikipedia page, all right, because the Wikipedia page describes his band as comedic glam metal. And I'm not buying that. I do not buy that. So I'm just going to go by their own Instagram description as the greatest rock band of all time. All right. So from the greatest rock band of all time, Steel Panther, would you please welcome guitarist Satchel. Hello, Satchel. I am so happy to be here, Ryan. Thank you. Um, it's an honor because it's your 50th anniversary. And a lot of people, if anybody knows much about me, they probably know that next week is a big is a big deal for me. Uh, it's the 50th anniversary, not just a 50th, the 50th episode's a big deal, but for me, it's the 50th anniversary of the first herpes outbreak I had when I was uh, oh. in my, just my wow. uh, just a teenager at the time. You're such a kid though. I mean, that, that I passed know. for me a few years ago. It really did. Cause I, I mean, I didn't think it would go just so dark web so quickly, but yeah, I, I, I got the, uh, I got the big age. You never forget your first time. You never forget your first time. <laughs> That's the you good know? thing. I know. I only caught it once though. That's it. That's all. Yeah, I you can't have. catch it twice. That's a, actually I have a song <laughs> called you can't catch herpes twice, which will be coming out on uh on our record, our next record in 2028. Shanker Records. What? What? what yeah. What's the label? <laughs> that's, that's that should be that should be the actual new label. Michael Shanker. Shanker. Oh Shanker, my Shanker. God. Yeah, I never had oh, a Shanker, look. but. Oh yeah, Shanker. They're, they're bad. They're bad. They're news. not good. Yeah. Yeah, I never. I don't any... know because of, I've never had them myself, but our, our drummer sticks. He gets them all the time. It's horrible. <laughs> what? Do, anal warts? Is that something? Is that a thing? Never oh, had one of those either. You know, first time I had warts, I, I went to a doctor and it was it was this Jewish guy who burned all my warts off. And you're never going to guess what his name was. His last name was Schwartz. I thought it was so weird that Dr. <laughs> Schwartz was burning my warts. I was like, Dr. this can't Schultz. be real. I kept looking around for a, for a camera in the doctor's office like, this is... but there wasn't one. Unfortunately, I thought we were going to wow. film some porn. We're literally three minutes in, folks, and we've already covered herpes, anal warts, and um, who knows what's happening right now because we have and, we are going to talk a little bit about guitars at one point, I think. I hope. And they've covered us. They've covered us as well. <laughs> they've, they have. They have. I mean, what is your uh, what is your antibiotic of choice when it comes to that? Do you go for the Valtrex or do you go for just a straight ahead old school tetracycline or how do you get rid of your outbreaks? What's the best way? Well, I have, um, well, there's, you know, I think Valtrex is actually, um, a cyclovir. Is that what that is? So well, I like to, I like to off brand, you know, generic off brand. brand. Yeah. Right. Way. So the so Valtrex would be the, the brand name of a, a cyclovir or a cyclovir. I just get the generic stuff because I have <laughs> so many herpes outbreaks. It's like, I'm not going to buy the name brand. Wouldn't be able to afford uh, strings for my guitar, yeah. I Horrible. thought you must be Kaiser Permanente. Then you must be part of that that whole medical system. <laughs> yeah, but you you should my, be. My, my herpes really... are permanente. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you should actually have a really good health plan because aren't Steel Panther, they all have to be in SAG at this point. And oh, I don't mean SAG all... like like I don't mean that SAG, oh, yeah. which is I'm oh. sure is a another whole topic. <laughs> it is it is, trust me. Uh you know, no, we we just, you know, we kind of wing it. We're musicians, it's not easy. I don't even really know what the other guys' health plan is. I don't even know if they can be covered because they've all got so many problems. Uh you know, so many pre existings, right? I mean, if you talk about pre existing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, like Lexi's had, you know, so much, uh, you know, fat injected into his lips and, and like so much Botox. Like, I, you can't really, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. There's a lot of things yeah. that can go wrong. And, and, uh, you know, we all do a lot of drugs. So I, I think, I mean, of course, we lie on our, when, whenever we try to get insurance, we lie about that. Have you ever done recreational drugs? <laughs> like I'm on, I'm on them right now. Yes, of course. You can just say no. Does that mean? Does that mean you're doing drugs while you're playing sports or playing or maybe frisbee and stuff like that? Well, is, is that what they, recreational? Is that what you mean by recreational? <laughs> right. Sure. They do recommend that actually. You, you you have a higher performance level if you're on cocaine and you play. You ever play cocaine on your play football while you're on cocaine? It's. it's um, great. I, I watch it every Sunday. I watch it every Sunday, and I watch a lot of dudes do that. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a, it's a oh my great, God. much better sport with with cocaine involved. Well, it it, it actually is not cocaine. It's it, it's a it's a really hyped up Adderall. I think that's what it is. Wow, dude, you just got a a, a pound ninety nine. That can I buy did. some more Adderall. That's Fuck my friend Danny friend. in the in the UK. What's up, Danny? He says okay. he's a better guitar player than me, and a lot of, a lot of people do say that, Ryan. A lot of people think that they shred me on guitar. And we, you know, there was a video, I don't know if you saw this, years ago, there was this kid, he was like 11 years old, and he came to a, a Steel Panther show in Kansas City, and he wanted to get up and play, and I was, of course, you know, I was like, well, yeah, this will be great, you know, it's a, it's a Midland Theater in, in Kansas City, there was like at least 2,500 or 3,000 people there, so this kid really wanted to play, and um, we got him up, and he was 11, and he played, he, I just gave him the guitar and he played Eruption. And, um, and it, it, you know, of course people filmed it and it went viral. It was like viewed like 40 million times within the next 12 hours. And then by the end of the week, the kid was on um, the news. He was on like Fox and Friends or something. And he was playing guitar on the news. And, and I'm like, what the fuck, where's, where, how come I, where, how come I can't get on the news? <laughs> And then, and then I think Trump actually appointed him to his cabinet. That's why he was on Fox and Friends because he, could he, well he be. actually gained a position at that point. You know, hey man, give me a position, all right? I want to, I want to go around and, and make money off of foreign dignitaries. Come on, so <laughs> these guys. So this kid, like, blew his career blew up. He's, I think, he's dating Pamela Anderson now, and 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 ever since that, the kid, like it started this trend every time i go do a show there's a bunch of kids with these signs i challenge satchel to a guitar duel wow. and i have to ignore so, them every time because it's horrible yes so this is kind of the exact opposite of a dave Grohl move because you want to you started off trying to be a dave Grohl where everything would be hunky-dory but now you're just angry and bitter that these yeah. other 11 year olds can yeah. actually you know and they have a much younger springboard to go off with their career where you know yeah yeah, I've got like just, three years left, and these kids are like, <laughs> <laughs> these kids are fucking, and they're all way better than me. And then everybody makes fun of me, and then they 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 all wipe the floor with me, and they've got a career, and I'm like just trying to milk the last <laughs> few times I can play Glory Hole live without fucking it up. But it's uh, do you think they'll turn you into glue it. one day? I, I mean, I, I'm serious, Satchel. Will will they one day just like euthanize you and just like you know turn you into some sort of glue, or or maybe it's some sort of guitar guitar polish? Maybe that's how you go out. You become a guitar it'll be, polish. It'll be easy for him to do because I've sniffed enough glue in my life, so it's just, I'm practically there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you picked the wrong podcast episode to stop sniffing glue. Then get it that's a, <laughs> a plain reference yeah for the old, old schoolers man so right. seriously folks I, I you know the routine that i usually do i i have some sort of script and it is down here but it we've gone off topic and and i asked satchel before the uh we pressed record i said is there anything that's uh off topic and he said no everything's hot topic isn't that what you were saying oh yeah big fan of hot topic are you, are you are you a big well, fan of hot topic 
I'm wearing underwear from Hot Topic right now. Definitely Edible. not your own. Edible <laughs> underwear. <laughs> it's good stuff. You've got great stuff there. Have you all ever? The, all the 19 year olds that I date go there for uh, for their jewelry. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's quality. It's it's they go for the great quality. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I was going to go back to the whole uh, thing about with, with your bass player, Lacey. Um, he does resemble someone that's actually had plastic surgery, but actually used plastic. Like real like, like <laughs> solo cups. He's, yeah, he's he's a beautiful oh, yeah. guy. Look at him. It's it's look Lexi, by he the way. Yeah, Lexi, Lexi, look at his hair right there. His hair looks fucking amazing. And okay. um yeah, he's a beautiful man. I've, I've, uh, you know, I always wait until he falls asleep on the tour bus, and then I, ah, I won't tell you what I do. It's horrible. I'm going to ask the hardball questions. I really, this whole, this whole speech. There's no softballs with us, man. No softballs. No. I'm sure that. I don't expect. I, don't dumb it down for me, okay, Ryan? I'm ready to fucking go. Let's fucking do this shit. <laughs> hardball question. Um, have you guys ever gotten a hairspray endorsement? Well, we've been looking for one for uh, quite some time. Uh, I believe that Lexi has worked his own deals. Uh, I know he he's he's never out of hair, hairspray. So I, you know, wh whenever I need hairspray, right now I've got a perm, so yeah. I don't even need it. it. Like my hair just, which is why I like the perm. But some yeah. girls aren't into it because it, you know, it just it looks too much like pubic hair for them. But uh, Lexi's got always got hairspray and he's, and he's a fan of Aquanet. He loves Aquanet. I was going to say, is Aquanet still a company? Is it still, it a, is. and if it, if it is a company, what, what, uh, can of spray? Cause, cause back in the day, folks, I, I, I had, I've been known to use a little bit of hairspray myself here and there. Um, I used to, the, I tried to go for the unscented blue can because the pink can that was scented smelled like stripper. It really did. I know. I like that. It turns me on. <laughs> It's you crave, all right. <laughs> and that's actually the can that, that Lexi uses. And maybe that's why it turns me on. I don't know. He's got the pink can. and okay. it, But I think for Lexi, it's just aesthetics. He likes the pink can because he, he has a pink base and he has a pink mirror on stage and he has pink lipstick and, you know, pink he has labia. pink everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Every <laughs> every part of him is pink. You know, look, look oh, pink, pink or purple. He's got a pink purple combination. Look at his beautiful mouth. God, I would fuck we, his we've face spent so much time talking about Lexi, and there's so much more to talk about. I, I'm sure there's a couple people tuning in right now, going, "I thought this was going to be a friggin' guitar interview." Yeah, we're getting yeah. to the guitars, folks. We can talk about guitar too, but here, hey, I, there's something. Did you know that before we became Steel Panther, we were we were we had a couple different names. Oh yeah, we were called oh, yeah. yeah we were called Metal Shop. And we started off as Metal Shop, and then we became Metal School for a little while. We were playing the Sunset Strip for years, and um, and before Styx was in our band, we had a couple drum. We we went through a few drummers, but one exactly of the drummers, exactly like Spinal Tap, exactly like the, it, the Spinal Tap the well, movie. You guys lived it, pretty much. And you know what's ironic is that a lot of bands go through drummers like that too. I don't know why this is, but drummers are they do explode occasionally on a drum seat and leave a, a green globular, and sometimes they leave and sometimes they get fired and um but one of our drummers I, I think he played with you years ago too um Who was that? didn't you didn't you um did you play did you play with tell bachman years ago yes i did yeah um our, okay we, who was um lance lance porter Remember you had lance, lance in your band lance is yeah, a great drummer he's a great he's a great drummer here's the thing the opposite of the guy in spinal tap because i think stumping joe pete was a really tall blonde guy lance was exactly yeah. opposite because he was kind yeah. of a, a smaller uh, petite brunette guy and yeah. but, but what a fucking drummer and he is great drummed, he, he drummed he drammed how do you say he drummed how do you say drumming past tense i'm fucking now i'm I, I, losing yeah it he drummed I, he, I think it's he drummed thou art it, drummed and, and he liked big, big, big drums anyway. So it, it, it just actuate, yep. actuated his, uh, his size. Petiteness. <laughs> his petiteness. Nice he, he, he was a great drummer. I mean, I think I, I can't, you know, we, we, had a, we had a few drummers that were really, really good before Styx came in. And actually, um, I don't know if you know, uh, for a, a while there, um, I lost you. I lost you, Ryan. Are you still here? No, no, no. You're um, still there. Do it. Go ahead. It's okay. all you now. Oh, you scared, don't, the, don't, scared the hell don't out of me. Afraid. I thought you left me. I thought you left me. So, <laughs> this is TV. We, had, we uh, have a producer that does that. Oh, Dick we have is a producer. Great. He's scaring the hell out of me. He's like screens changing everywhere. So our, we also had um, 
Ray Luzier played with us before before we were Steel Panther. Styx has been the only drummer in Steel Panther, but when we played cover songs, uh, Ray Luzier played with us for a little while too. And um, and uh, but there's that Styx, of course. What the cat dragged in uh, rip off of that album cover. I, I, I'm just well, pointing it you out. know, we actually came up with the idea first, and then those guys saw it and they they became a hit. They had a hit band with it, I and now nothing, we can't I compete. Put nothing past DC. I, you know, I put what was that? CC. you put nothing past CC. Oh, CC, you know? listen, CC stole all my licks too. I had to like rearrange all my guitar playing just because he, <laughs> he put all my good licks on the first Poison record. And then I had to go back and take lessons from Paul Gilbert and it was really difficult. I'm getting to that. I'm getting, see, you, you've got my script. You got my head spinning all around, dude. You got me loco. But I, I, I had this section called The Many Faces in, of Steel Panther because I knew that you guys had the name Metal Shop. I knew that you guys had the name Metal School, but I know a little bit of inside information and maybe you were a part of it, maybe you weren't. But I remember one of the very first shows you guys played was under the name Camaro. Am I correct? Well, it was, it wasn't actually, we were metal shop when we did that show at the Viper room. Yes. Yeah. It was at the Viper room and the, and the night was called, apparently the night was called Camaro, like the Camaro club or, you know, and, and, but we were metal shop, but I don't know if you remember that. Were you there that night? No, because I was playing a rival show. You don't understand that we, we were playing down at the gig on Melrose and I had a gig. club that summer called love uh club american style and i uh put together a band with eric dover eric singer uh yeshia stefan adika and and uh, uh who else was it was it teddy zigzag or was it um yeah i believe it was teddy but we called it glam nation so glam nation yes. and middle school i think we debuted i think on the, the same, same night same, same night yeah but you guys went That's on amazing. to yeah, we went on to <laughs> you guys went on to superstardom and Kiss and uh, Eric Singer just went back to Kiss. You know the hack. Oh Look yeah, the, yeah. Eric Singer did go back. To Kiss. And he's, he's a, those guys are all great. Eric Dover's awesome, by the way. He's Thank he's you, a yes. talented dude. I take dude. all credit for Eric Dover because he. I, I feel that he's the best front man singer. I know you believe in your front man as well. I mean, I have not as much not, as it, not as much anymore. I know I used to believe in our singer a lot, but. He's getting really old. <laughs> well, I, I'm I'm a huge fan of Eric Dover. I'm a huge fan of your singer as well. Um, but that's where we get to ourselves. Let's go back to Get Forward because you did mention way, way, way back a couple sentences ago uh, about Paul Gilbert. And uh, yeah. well, first of all, you were born in Northern California, and you you, you know you came from North, Redwood City, and and yes. I immediately. Wow! Look at that. Like that's our producer. Just that, yeah. that, that's basically were, were you born under that uh, awning? My I was man. born. Yeah, I was born on the train tracks right there. I lived on the train tracks in a cardboard box for quite some time until I, then they started running the trains and I had to move. But so, uh, they, yeah, the thing is, I I'm from Northern California too, so I wanted to really focus on that. And then we had a really quick email exchange before the show, and you said, uh, "Yeah, I moved when I was six months." So what I really want to concentrate. <laughs> yeah. on those first six months of your life and let's let's just basically make the show about that yeah, of course I was, well, well, I was laying around i was very comfortable in my own skin back then i didn't feel awkward at all shitting myself i still don't actually i can do i could do it right now <laughs> i mean you I'm might be a, we I have could, no idea. You, know, you, you wouldn't know i mean i i do wear an adult diaper from time to time because i, I drink uh, so much that uh, sometimes I wet myself and I don't want to have to clean up the chair, you know? That sounds like a sort of a Stevie Nicks story, but I, I feel that, I feel that, uh, I really feel that Steel Panther has gained that sort of reputation where you can seriously wear an adult diaper and just do it. I, I've always wanted to, but I never have. Have you, have you seriously ever worn an adult diaper? I have. I have done, I've done it as an adult and I did it. We, we actually were, we were filming a scene one time for Steel Panther where we were all standing around uh, wearing adult diapers. And that was the whole, that was the whole scene because we just didn't want to have to go to the bathroom. So we, we just wore the adult diapers and, you know, we were at a party basically. 
and we would just piss ourselves as we were drinking. And it was it was a great scene, you know. <laughs> but it's the reason why it's great is because it's it's true. That kind of stuff comes from real life. And and speaking of Stevie Nicks, um, we had a manager at one point who knew Stevie Nicks, so we all went to Stevie Nicks's house and spent the night one time. And Stevie was nowhere to be found, but I did sleep in Stevie Nicks's bed, and she doesn't know this. And I was, you know, you know, when you when you have that opportunity to sleep in Stevie Nicks's bed, of course I, you have to you have to you know rub one out. And so I totally <laughs> did, just so I could say I did it. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, it is. I mean, hopefully the uh, the personal assistant or the housing staff didn't come, you know, didn't didn't actually change the sheets, and maybe she would have gotten a little bit of a you know enjoy me to that. Exactly. That's. It's, I left it all over all over the pillowcase, actually. <laughs> Are you filming this from a guitar center, Satchel? Um, I'm just curious because it seems like you're at the guitar section of the I guitar am. center right now. I work that... at the guitar center now, ever since COVID hit. <laughs> ever since <laughs> COVID hit. Yeah. Wow. I changed all the all strings. Your... Check this out, by the way. There's okay. an awesome, awesome fan. This guy named John, who lives in the United States, made me this guitar. And uh, how awesome is that? It's the shocker. You guys know what the shocker, shocker. is, right? Yeah, two, two, in the in, two in the pink, one in, one one in the stink. stink. And it actually, it's, it is, you mentioned scratch and sniff. This thing, <laughs> oh. this thing is scratch and sniff. It's awesome. Beautiful, beautiful guitar. And oh. it stays in tune great. And um, I mean, it doesn't even I mean, have to stay in tune. When you, when you got a guitar, by the way, look at my, uh, these are my jammies. Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon jammies. Wow. And I'm not wearing so you, underwear right now. So you sleep at the Guitar Center as well, obviously. You just live there. That's <laughs> basically what you do. <laughs> That's because, because I lost my house as well during this pandemic. But they invited me in. They said, you know, change the strings. You can sleep sleep in the back room where the, where the coffee maker is. It's been great. <laughs> Well, I, actually, folks, if you hear the story about Stevie Nicks right now, anybody that's working at that Guitar Center, please don't drink the coffee. Because if, if he's willing to do that in Stevie Nicks' bed, look what he's willing to do to a coffee maker. I never, sure. I never run out of creamer. Let me just put it that way. Oh, boy. I, I, I set that one up for you. That was a little bit of a softball, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> so getting back to you being uh, six months old in Redwood City, and um, let's move on to a couple years later because yeah. – we are both uh, GIT alumni, and I'm not sure if you want to talk about that, Satchel. Is it something that you, sure, you're that proud of? Okay, is it, uh, okay good. Yeah, I mean, listen, our GIT, listen, if you're a guitar player, anybody who plays guitar and is older than um, I am knows that GIT, it was, a, it, you know, it's still a school. And uh, it, for me, I went there when I was pretty young, and it was a great experience, uh, mainly because there's so many good musicians that go there and uh it's just awesome to be surrounded by by great players and be inspired by great players and uh yeah i went there i went i went there for a little while and i taught there for a little while and uh met a lot of awesome people and you know joined bands out of that place and and uh, it's still going strong and there's a lot of lot still a lot of great uh teachers there and uh i love i had a great experience i mean I went there a couple of years before you did, um, but at the same time, I remember all the people that you ended up, you know, hanging with, playing in bands with. One of those people being Paul Gilbert, of course, because I lived on, uh, I believe I lived on Orchid, Orange, and Sycamore. I lived on all three of those streets because those, and anybody that's familiar with Hollywood knows that yeah. that's right near where the school is and you just walk to school. But I, I agree with you. It, it didn't make me a better guitar player. It made me a better practice. Uh, it, it really, it made me practice better. It made me have better practice habits. And, and I learned a lot more about life than I did about music. I feel just being surrounded by musicians. Right. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, I, I can remember going to that, uh, going to GIT, I think the first day and I looked around and there was about 800 guitar players. And I thought to myself, oh God, that's there's a, just in this room, there's 800 guitar players and I'm going to be competing with them for gigs and things like that. It really made me uh, focus on, on things that could make me stand out more like being a good singer and being really creative and, and learning how to write good songs. I felt like, uh, 
you know, that, that was uh, really a key thing because there was a lot of shredders even back then, even 25 oh, yeah. years ago, there was a lot of guys that could play great. And um, so I felt like you had to have something more to offer. And, you know, of course, I've got a strong jawline. And uh, extremely good looking compared to most 72 year olds. And, <laughs> but I thought, you know, if I can write songs for me, uh, you know, that was one of the things about uh, Steel Panther and, and taking Steel Panther and making it an original band. Cause we started as a cover band, but I, I felt like, uh, you know, that's, that's always, you know, the goal as a musician, like how can I turn, turn this into a unique thing? And, uh, stand out among other bands and 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 i feel like that that's sort of what we've done as steel panther there there might be other bands out there that that try to do what we do but nobody does it quite the same or quite as well as as what we do and we've got a chemistry and we have a unique a unique approach to our songs so nobody does all, it better nobody yeah, does it all, better thank you that was all no that was actually just a double o, wasn't that a, i was just thinking of that uh, 007 theme song nobody, nobody does, does. Yeah. Oh, that was a great what harmony. A, what a great, um, what a great song. What a yeah. great harmony we, we have. <laughs> yeah, no, it's amazing harmony. I mean, it's, it's, have you ever tried to jam with somebody on a Zoom call? It's almost impossible. It's tragic. No, yeah. it's not. It's it's not almost impossible. It's impossible. You know, it is impossible. Word latency, not not, <laughs> not lacy. It's latency. Yeah, that could have been the uh, new bass player of Steel Panther. Latency. Hey, Ryan, um, how do you? How do you? Where, how, do you always have this many hot chicks on your? Oh, look at all the hot chicks in the comments. Danny and then there was a bunch. Of, every every oh, oh, there's a hot chick. Oh, that's Lexi. Oh, and Andrea. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. There you go. And there's, there's Nick. Hot chick. Nick had to blow the hot chick. Yeah. Oh, there, oh there's a chick with oh, that, but, oh, that was a me. hot chick too. Oh, that was you, <laughs> Jesus. You are a hot chick, Ryan. God. Hey, Thank you, you know much. what? If Lexi, Lexi kicks the bucket from too much Botox, you're you're welcome to join Steel Panther. Dude, base is base, dude. Base is yeah, base. Exactly. I'll, I'll be I'm right there. You know, speaking of, you you're no stranger to playing bass because <laughs> I know your accolades as a guitarist, but getting back to Paul Gilbert, somehow the two yeah. of you guys hooked up and um, you were playing bass. I was checking out this video while I was doing my, my research today. It was called a uh, freaky tuning. What was it? Something like that. If you want to go down the dark web folks, you can go find this video. And I was learning some Paul Gilbert licks, but I, then I got to the tuning part and I see yeah. a certain, a certain guy playing bass with all the whole yeah. notes. And oh, yeah. that was you. How did that a whole oh, yeah. And when when did that video come out? That was like a, a th at least uh, 20, 27 years ago. That video came out, but you know, Paul. You know, I have, I actually met Paul when I went to GAT years and years ago, and he was, you know, I think I was like sixteen, and he was like 20, 20 years old or something, and and you know, which Paul is huge always, back in then. Well, you know, like like you gotta understand yeah. when you're 16 and someone's 20, it's kind of yeah. like the, like when I first moved to LA and like even though Nikki Six is not that much older, because he could get into the Rainbow Bar and Grill and I had to wait out in the parking lot, it was exactly. life. It was like a huge life difference. <laughs> it, it was, and uh, but Paul Paul was incredible at that point too, and a great inspiration. But but uh, I befriended Paul and and he. You know, not only inspired me as a guitar player, but also as a songwriter. And and he was very open to. He loved listening to obscure records from the '60s and '70s, and and really, you know, cool bands that never became huge, like the MC5, like you know, and and uh, yeah, and Wayne Kramer, songwriter, yeah, songwriters like uh, uh, like Todd Rundgren, who a lot of people, if you're if you're if you were into heavy metal at the time, you know, most people weren't didn't cross that far into the into the pop and uh and, and piano r songwriter kind of guy stuff but paul was really into that stuff and uh he turned me on to a lot Ooh, look at that look at how sexy all those guys were all their now, stuff glowed which, in the dark, which, now the was this band was was this the band that you had uh the racer x offshoot bad dog was that bad dog that, that's actually racer x right there and okay. um, but I was in a band with with Jeff Martin as well after when Racer X broke up and Paul joined Mr. Big and a lot, you know, the history of that, like I, you know, the, the rest of the guys in Racer X put a band together called The Scream. Do you remember? Do you remember The Scream? Yes, I do remember The Scream. And Wasn't John Karabi the, the singer of that John, band? 
John Karabi sang in that band for a little yeah. while, and then he went and sang and joined Motley Crue. Yes, he and, did. Uh, and I, I was in a band with Jeff Martin after Racer X broke up and we played for a little while. And, um, but yeah, it was, you know, everybody joined bands with everybody back then. I, I just saw a dog. There's a, there's a dog in Guitar Center. I didn't think they left animals yeah. in Guitar Center. We have rats. That was a rat. That's, that's, These fucking rats shit. here are massive. It's yeah. gone crazy. I feed them. Yeah. I feed them. Uh, and, we, and that's the only way they don't attack. If you feed them, they, they, they just walk around and they'll you know, give them cheese and shit. Great. Speaking of all these bands that you guys that you started playing with, because it wasn't just Paul Gilbert, you also played in War and Peace with Jeff Pilson. And I did. I played that, with Jeff Pilson. And that's where I that's where my connection that how I was able to get you onto this um into this podcast to begin with. Uh we gotta well, thank Mr. Tommy Henriksen uh for for sort of laying the pieces of getting us all together. He was the Henry Kissinger in this. Uh, sort of story and he brought us together he hooked up our emails and i know that tommy and jeff pilson have been close friends and then i mean what's yeah. your association with jeff and what's it with tommy as well well uh i was i was pretty young when i started playing with those guys oh look at this one of those wild rats um they're uh but i, was, I think i was a teenager and i know that and i knew that tommy and jeff were putting a band together and i i just I went and auditioned and they, they loved my guitar playing. And I, and I thought they were great guys. Uh, Jeff Pilson's awesome. And Tommy is awesome. Tommy's one of the most talented dudes I've ever met. And um, he can sing great and he plays all the instruments. And, and uh, I was always inspired by that too. Like, like Tommy was really focused on, on songwriting and, and those guys wanted to just write songs I don't even know where that thing came from. Where, it's wandering around. <laughs> it seems very um, calm though for for a rat. It's just <laughs> very casual. You 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 do have a good rapport with it. <laughs> we treat the rats really well here at Guitar Center. That's that's our motto. Um, but Tommy was was such a talented dude, and Jeff was so talented, and they those guys inspired me to to get get even better as a songwriter and focus on that. And uh, Tommy, you know, as you know, Tommy's super talented, and I've known those guys for way too long. I know I still look like I'm 19, but um, I'm, I'm actually a really old dude. Oh, look at Ann Catherine Muller. Oh yeah. It's a cute rat. Ann. <laughs> but they're, they're cute. Oh my, it's, hold on. So yeah, those, those guys are great. And, uh, and, and our drummer, Ricky parent at the time went on to play with enough's enough for a little while. And he was an awesome yeah. drummer as well. Isn't it great how all these bands that you form when earlier in your career, you see the band members go on to do other things and then you're able to see each other later on in shows and, you know, either well, that's a cool picture of you, of Paul Gilbert. Yeah. I don't know what, who's, what's he putting that up there for? Vic is just you can, putting random yeah. shots of, of you rats. Can tell that Paul Gilbert is uh he's actually seven foot three. Oh my I, God. Both those guys okay. are really tall. Jeff Martin, Martin is tall as well. Let me ask you this as a guitarist, because I know that Paul Gilbert has freakishly long hands that might do because he's a really tall guy. Do you have long fingers? I mean, I've always said like Steve Vai, um, uh, Paul Gilbert, um, Nuno Betancourt. I, I see these people having almost freakishly long fingers. Do you have long fingers? Uh, my, women my fingers are, I mean, I don't think they're super long. And, uh, you know, when I was a kid, like, I, you know, when I met Paul, I saw his hands were like, and he can do, he can definitely do things on the guitar that, that are strange and, and bizarre. But um, I was inspired by, by, because I thought, oh my gosh, like, I'm never going to be able to do what Paul does. I don't think anybody can, is ever going to be able to do the things that Paul Gilbert can do on guitar. He can do freakish things on guitar. But yeah. I was also inspired to see that some of my other favorite guitar players at the time were dudes that had normal size hands and some of them had smaller than normal size hands. So I've, I've always, you know, felt like it's not so much the size of your hands. It's more about the effort that you put into learning how to play the guitar. And wow, uh, you, good life, you, what a nice life. Yeah. You, you can definitely, uh, it's not the size of the, uh, it's the motion of the ocean, right? I mean, <laughs> your penis size does matter though. I, I do know that all the girls have told me that. Well, you should probably start, you should maybe make that quote to someone that's like, you know, pretty much going to have a different job come January 22nd. And if you have small hands, don't worry about it. You can still do follow your dreams. 
right? You, you, can, you can get a job as a guitar player as long as they let us out of our houses at some point. <laughs> Are you telling Trump that Guitar Center is hiring? Um, is yeah, that what the deal is? He's, well, you never know. Maybe he'll be, maybe he can rock. Well, s some of your favorite guitar players, when you talk about short, you know, smaller fingers, some have no fingers. Tony Iommi is one of your favorite guitars, and he's got what? What's his deal? Uh, you know, a lot of people don't know that he actually cut his fingers off in a bagel accident. I think it was a bagel accident, wasn't it? Because that's <laughs> the, I don't know if you damn know this, cream cheese. Most, <laughs> damn you, locks. <laughs> Everybody, I mean, I eat bagels all the time, and it's very difficult. You do not want to cut the the bagel with a steak knife, guys. That's the worst, easiest way to cut your fingers off. Just ask Tony Iommi about it. Um, but a lot of people don't know this. I I slammed my fingers in a door when I was years ago, and I was going to the hospital. It yanked my fingers off my off, broke them, and they and the fingernails were out of the skin. It was horrible. And um, on the way to on the way to the hospital, I was think I thought about Tony Iommi. I thought, well, if Tony Iommi can fucking do it, then cool. I can do it, right? <laughs> yeah. he's, he's, he inspired me. In my, you might have done it on purpose. Then I think that was like like sort of one of those copycat pity things that you did, maybe yeah, subliminally. You never know. You subliminally, never know. I was actually yeah. I was like, hey, I want I need to get that tone that Tony's got on uh, on on the Neon Knights solo. Yeah. <laughs> Slam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So obviously we have this section of the show called uh, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. So I'm, I'm not sure if that's the truth, but it was a hell of a good story. You know, it's, it's, I've never told a lie. Well, not to me. Yeah. That's, you know? and, and I'm not, I'm going to let you judge whether that's a lie or not. Uh, I'm looking at, I'm looking at some of these other influences that you have. The one that's, I mean, you do have a lot of the uh, usual suspects, if you will. You have uh, EVH, obviously, a huge uh, uh, influence of all of us. Uh, of Wigny, Wigny, Malmsteen, um, obviously a big one as well. Um, is that you right is there? It, that's, that is, I don't even know who that is. Whoever it is, it's, I think that's a good looking hand, chap. It? Yeah. That is a good looking guy. Works that out. Was yeah, but, but that was before that whole, um, where, where it was still cool not to have to shave your underarms. Now everybody is yeah. like all man, yeah. you know, manscaped, but I like it yeah, that you're brave. Hashtag brave. I like stay here. Stay hairy kids. Um, <laughs> you know, I was, it's funny cause the new ACDC album, I've been listening to the new ACDC. Right. And, uh, and I, I, I think, and you know, of course we've all been talking about Eddie Van Halen so much lately cause he passed away and he was a massive influence on so many people. And I, you know, a lot of people, you know, of course, everybody was very heartbroken when Malcolm died as well. But I don't think I don't think most people realize that um, Malcolm Young probably influenced just as many guitar players, if if not more than Eddie, I think. Like, there, I think that there's more people, more bands over the last 50 years have tried to rip off the ACDC sound than any other band. And, and that was really all like, you know, Malcolm, I think Malcolm, you know, I, I was listening to a interview with Angus recently and uh, the new ACDC does rock. You're right, Hannah. And, um, and, and even Angus was saying like, this was, you know, this was Malcolm's, you know, thing. This is, this band was, you know, he drove it and you can tell uh, so much of ACDC is driven by, you know, the rhythm guitar and, and Malcolm would just, he wasn't flashy. He would just stand back there by the drums and like play the greatest rhythm guitar um, yeah. ever. And I think he really did influence more musicians than than is, almost is any other guitar player. Is it safe to say that if there was no Malcolm Young, there would be no Izzy Stratton or Gilly Clark? I, I I would say that, wouldn't you? I mean, Malcolm, I'm sure. I just did say it, actually. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you think. said it. And I'm not disagreeing <laughs> with you. <laughs> and, and and speaking of ACDC, that is a very hairy band as well. I mean, when you talk they, about hair, they, they, they don't, definitely. they don't, they just don't give a fuck. They yeah, just, that's cool. They just let it grow, you know. Absolutely, it's like I mean, they, yeah, they they, uh, they they were originally going to be called Mammoth, but then they Van Halen had the name, so uh -huh. so they just you yeah. know, 
moving down your list of, of influences because I because I, I, I you know again the script folks don't 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 follow the script today because we're here with Satchel. yeah we're here with Satchel of Steel Panther so everything is off topic hot topic everything yeah you're listening to in the trenches uh live stream episode our 50th episode if you are just tuning in right now hit that uh hit that subscribe button that Vic can put up but uh, we are talking with satchel all his guitar influences and of course we're talking about herpes as well um but this will be do you think these all your guitar heroes had herpes is that a safe i would to like say? to think i would i would like to think so i mean <laughs> listen all all of my major guitar influence i mean like you talk about eddie van halen you're talking about malcolm young you're talking about you know all the great guitar players from the eighties, you know, like, uh, you know, Steve Vai and, and, uh, you know, Steve oh, you know Vai's clean. I, I, I can't imagine him with herpes. I can't, I can't even imagine. Really? Dirty guy. Yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, I'm just assuming, I don't know for sure, but I'm going to assume Steve Vai has got herpes among other things. He's a good looking oh. guy. Okay. That's true. That's true. You know who I, you know who I, I liked a lot when I, I talk about this guy a lot, but he's, he was kind of like under the radar as well. The guitar player guess. from, Go for it. Let me guess. Let me guess. I'm going to say, because I saw him on your list, and I was like, huh, I see the usual suspects. I see Alex Lifeson. Everybody loves Rush. Who doesn't love yeah. Rush? Everybody loves Eddie Van Halen. But then you got this guy, Buck Dharma. And Vic, put up a picture of Buck Dharma. Do you have that picture for us? Oh, no. He just shaking He's his great. Head, no. But but there it is. Buck Dharma from the band Blue Oyster okay. Cult. And tell us about how he is one of your guitar heroes, because that really impressed me. That, you, like you it. know, it's, it, they're one of those bands that I, I talk to like my friends who like the guys in my band, you know, and they, Bullish Cult was one of those bands that you, you, you either got into them or you didn't because some of their songs, their, especially their early records are very, they're, they're pretty out there. They've got some heavy. strange, yeah, some of it's really heavy, you know, I mean, they, they became a little more commercial later in their career, like with, with a uh, fire of unknown origin and, and, you know, uh, their hit was uh, Don't Fear the Reaper and things like that. But that but musical the, interlude, that musical interlude of, of, oh, yeah. of Don't Fear the Reaper is insane. It's so it, good. It is. And so the timing good. of it and everything. I actually was yep. able to play at a, at a festival we have here. I think uh, Steel Panther has played Sweden Rock before. It's a pretty big festival oh, yeah. here in Sweden. And yep. uh, I was able to play it uh, with a band called Blue Coop, who has got the Bruchard Brothers, uh, who are from Bloister Cult, as well yep. as Dennis Dunaway, household name Dennis Dunaway, original bass player of Alice Cooper. They call the band Blue Coop. So I got to come up and guess for them. I got to play Don't Fear the Reaper uh, oh, awesome. with those guys. But but to learning that musical interlude was something, dude. I'm telling you. Yeah, and that, yeah, it is. And that and was that was all that was all Buck Dharma, wasn't it? All Buck Dharma, and and you know, it's a you know that musical interlude is is all it's kind of a strange key. It's a it's like a harmonic minor or something, and yeah. a lot of diminished stuff in there. But but really, like Buck Dharma to me, like he was his phrasing on the guitar was so musical, and and a lot of you know. You know, especially during the '80s, when I, when, you know, when I was learning how to play the guitar and listening to a lot of guys, there was a lot of people that were faster and could shred really well. But, but I was always drawn towards, you know, Eddie Van Halen, who had it all, right? Like Eddie Van Halen could phrase great, and he had speed and accuracy, and and he was clean, and and his rhythm guitar playing was amazing. But, but to me, what made guitar players, lead guitar players, really fun to listen to was was their musicality. And that comes down to the way you phrase, you know, your, your note choices and your phrases. And Buck Dharma had, you know, there he is. Buck Dharma has That's always- Great shot. Thank you, Vic. Yeah, he's, he's always been one of the tastiest guitar players, uh, I, I feel like, in, in rock and roll. And do you remember the, uh, the song, We're Stars? Remember that? We're stars. I'm, I don't know that one. I'm sorry. I'll be, I'll be it, honest. It was, um, it was a huge, okay. You remember when, when they did uh, We All, We Are the World, right? In 1983, Michael yes, Jackson. So that was, that was a massive thing. And then heavy metal, the heavy metal guys went, we should do a heavy metal. We are the world. So, um, you know, they had, you know, Dio and, you know, J Jeff Tate and all these different things. I think in there as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you and in? It? Are, you might, you no, might be. Satchel, Satchel might have been there as a, as a. As a I baby. wish, I wish I was. I, was, I think I, I, I was getting uh, one of my testicles removed. Oh that <laughs> There's a rad oh, fight. There's a literally rad fight. a rad fight going on inside Guitar Center, folks. <laughs> you know what? This is rad. <laughs> these, these rats are nuts. 
I don't know what's going on. I fed them. I fed them earlier, but they're going crazy right now. Holy Here they come crap. again. Look out! <laughs> All right, they're, they're obviously getting. Uh, they're obviously going crazy about the Buck Dharma talk. So we're going to move they on love, from that. These rats love Buck Dharma. I don't know where it is. Every time it I talk about Buck Dharma, they go nuts. <laughs> I'm thinking something. Okay, I'm just going to put it out there, Satchel. Um, yeah. all, the, all the guitar players that you've listed, and tell me if this is you've ever thought about this, they all seem to come from like this musical, heavy beginning of their careers, but then like there's a shift at one point where they become a bit more pop. And we can we can break this down with with Rush, of course. All the earlier yeah. Rush albums, very fucking cerebral, very you know musical. But then it, it ends up being more and more pop, Muse, if you will. And then mm -hmm. uh, BOC, of course, with those earlier songs, Don't Fear the Reaper, Godzilla. But then I'm Burning for You, become a little bit more pop. Van Halen. Mm -hmm. You have fair warning, and then, yep. and then by the time that you know 1984 come in, and I don't even want to talk about when Van Hagar came around, then it becomes full on pop, yeah. pop. You know, of uh, course, I, I agree. I mean, yeah, I think back then, especially like so much of that was driven by um, the pressure that bands felt from record companies to sell more records and get on the radio more, and yeah. uh, and you know, uh, listen, Van Halen. Uh, w there's no doubt. I think in anybody's mind that Van Halen with David Lee Roth, like what was this amazing chemistry, right? Like, like, and when, when, when you have a chemistry like that with a band, it's, it's a, and you take one person out of it, it changes a lot. And even though Van Halen had some of their biggest hits after, after David Lee Roth left, like, and they did become more pop oriented and more radio friendly. And Sammy Hagar is a great singer, right? Great singer. But, to me, it, it uh, they it, they lost the chemistry that they had with David Lee Roth, and and so even though they were selling more records, it was uh, you know it's great for the record company, but for, for me, the, it made the band less interesting, you know. And I think that, a lot of Van Halen fans probably agree with that. But no, I, I'm I'm that I'm that guy. I'm the David Lee Roth era. I'm the Bon Scott era. I'm yeah. you know um, I'm the Aerosmith era before Steven Tyler became Steven Tyler. You know. <laughs> yeah right, um, but but yeah you're right. I think but but there's bands like like Blue Oyster Cult was never a super popular band, and I'm sure the record companies were like, hey, we got to have some radio hits here. And uh, towards their end, the end of their career, they they were really trying to have more radio hits. And to me, it it definitely made the music a little less exciting because their early stuff was it was like a bunch of kids that went, hey, let's just do whatever we want and experiment and have fun and do weird arrangements that and, freedom. and they have that freedom, you know, I, that's a uh, very I, true, by the way. I don't know what, stripper, how this came up, but if a stripper can't dance to your song, it probably sucks. There it is. True, but, Vic, our producer getting life lessons. I guess. And then, but on the other side of that, if a stripper is a good stripper, she can pretty much dance to anything. Right. So that is true. And we've seen that. Let exactly. me ask you this though. Do you see that happening? And, and and this is kind of a depressing question, but do you see that ever happening with Steel Panther? You know, you guys um, strippers dancing to our more... songs <laughs> happens all the time. Yeah, but I'm course. talking about making that shift to where you are more of a pop sensation, sort of you know you mainstream. Well, you know, if you if you listen to our our records, you can tell that. Um, <clears throat> you know, record by record. We've, I mean, we've got pop hits on every on every record, but the, every the album, radio, every every song's a hit. The radio is never going to play us because you know we we made that choice a long time ago, and it's a double edged sword. I mean, we we you know it's even harder to get attention and to be heard as a new artist now than it was when we started, and we started twenty you know more than twenty years ago, really, right. and. Um, so, and that was still when you could sell records and now you can't really sell records. So, so really just to get people to pay attention to you is a very, very difficult thing. But, uh, you know, we made that choice a long time ago because we were always um, irreverent and we were, you know, edgy and we used a lot of cutting edge, politically incorrect humor in our live show. And for me, so. the goal was to write songs that matched what we did as a live band. Because we started as a live band. We've always been a live band first. And we have a great time live. And I wanted our records to match what we did live. And 
and write about the shit that we talk about live, which is sex and drugs and partying and and a lot of that shit, you know. And we and you know, of course, we 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 go straight for the jugular and we talk about we don't we don't use clever wording. We, we the, that's the whole thing. We talk about exactly what we're talking about. There's no confusion when you hear Steel Panther singing about something, and um, that's the beauty of it, right? So you but, don't see yourself ever doing sort of a Billy Squire move where all of a sudden there's a video and you're rolling around in you know in a sort of a absurd outfit, or is that every video? I'm not sure. Le- Lexi, Lexi, Lexi could pull that off <laughs> for sure. But yeah, every it, video it, for Lexi is a Billy Squire video, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. But yeah, we're never gonna do. I mean, we're always gonna do what we dig and our fans, you know, our, our fans, you know, I think that, that, I mean, you're always going to have fans that, that tell you your new album sucks compared to your old, old album. Cause that's just standard, but, but um, we just do stuff for ourselves at this point And we do stuff to, you know, if we all love the songs, then, then we'll put them out. And if we don't, then we probably will write more songs and put out songs that we, we dig. And, and, uh, but that's that's also the beauty of the, where the music business is now. I, I think uh, you know, there's. I don't personally feel pressure to write songs to get on the radio. I don't feel so pressure to to write songs that because uh, there's not a whole lot of money in that anymore. You know, I mean, we we, we are a live band. And, yeah, we we write songs for our fans, and our fans are going to get those songs for free anyway. So we just want people to enjoy it, and we want to enjoy it. And if and if I'm gonna if I want to write a song about your gang bang in an old folks home. I'm going to do it. And I, and I do it. It's part of the fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's, 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 it relates to so many of us because, you know, my mom was living before she passed in an old folks home and, you know, probably a lot of that stuff was happening. No doubt. Oh, there's no doubt. <laughs> Here we, here we are with Satchel. Satchel, I'm having a, such a good time talking, and I'm looking at the clock, and we're we're totally going. I, do you have time to hang and chill with us for a little bit? Because well, I, of course, I don't okay. wear a watch. Yeah. If you're enjoying your time with us, we'd love to have you because this is our 50th episode of In the Trenches. We're making a special one, folks. Thank you very much for that logo there, Vic. And thank you, everyone, for being in the chat. If you're just listening to us on the uh, audio, make your way on over to the YouTube official channel and uh, subscribe so you can check out and be part of this chat because, um, man, I still want to talk about so much stuff. And then we have the let the people speak section because this is where, like I said, my, my job was made easy this week because so many of your fans, Satchel, uh, wanted to ask questions and wanted to find out things about you. But we're going to get up to that a little bit in part two. But I just was going to close up this uh, section of going back to get forward. So we're up to speed with uh, a little bit of Satchel's history because you have played um, all roads lead to cover bands is sort of in a way you've been in a thin lizzy cover band you've been in a, a, a glam rock a metal cover uh band called they were from cleveland called out of the blue as another one well, that, a, that was actually um that was an original, original band Shit. okay and okay. and it was uh it's where i found um our our bass player lexi fox that's where you found him okay where Shit. Found him. Yeah. see all bands, all bands, you you take, you pick and choose from one band member to the other. You were right. also in a Van Halen uh, uh, cover band tribute. at one point, Atomic Punk yeah, tribute. It was, it was it was a tribute to Van Halen, and and uh, and the singer in that band was was our singer Michael Starr. And uh, have you? I don't know if you've ever seen our singer Michael Starr. Is he's a great front guy, but he also has this unique ability to to be able to. Um, uh, emulate people's vibes, and uh, so he can he can impersonate people. You're so and, politically correct, dude. You're so you you have that relationship with a singer. You can oh, tell am, that, that it's not the, contentious. It's so I harmonious. Am the most politically correct guy in the world. I, I've I am always very careful not to offend people, and I never say the c word. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's not true. Oh, um, He's talking about COVID. Yeah. Before. So, but no, our singer is 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 a. He has this ability to, uh, like, he can do an impersonation of David Lee Roth, and he can, he becomes David Lee Roth. And I don't know if you've ever seen him do Ozzy, but he can do an impersonation of Ozzy where he becomes Ozzy, and all of a sudden you're in a band with Ozzy, and he and he's great. He sings just like him. He does. He has the uh, all the mannerisms 
he forgets where the microphone is on stage. And uh, but when we did when we did the Van Halen tribute, it was the same way. And of course, you know, when you're doing a Van Halen tribute, like when when you're in a tribute band at all, you have to nail it way more than if you're in the actual band. So like we <laughs> yeah, really of course. tried to make people it. are judging, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody's judging, and nobody will come see you if you if you're not good. So. So we we did, but the Atomic Punks are still together. They've got another singer now and another guitar player that's really good. His name is Lance Turner. And those guys play all the time. But Ralph and I did it for for many years. And then and, uh, and then and then we just started uh, just basically touring only with Steel Panther around the world because uh we, we got way more pussy that way. Of course. Well, yeah. another band that got you probably tons of pussy was Moving Pictures. That was a tribute to Rush, oh, right? Unbe- <laughs> un- unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> definitely seems more like a, a guy muso band. A lot of like, were you channeling yeah. Getty Lee at that point? Who was the one? Was, was Michael Starr in that and where he could channel yeah. Getty Lee just like that? Or can yeah, anybody yeah, well, channel? My, Michael was Michael. I don't think Michael's ever listened to Rush. <laughs> <laughs> He's never listened to him. But the I'll tell you, we did a few shows with the with the Rush I, with the Rush tribute band. And the audience consisted of guys with mustaches and Hawaiian shirts. Everybody looked everybody looked like Alex Lifeson from 1978 for, for 30 rows back. There ton I don't of think there was any girls there. Out in front, right? Just like shitload of ton white vans, people yeah. and fucking. All right, I got you. I, yeah. I, I can visualize the picture. But then you, you know, you're moving on to your original stuff, and this is a band that I asked you about if we could talk about a little bit before, before right. because this is right before we tag our break, folks. But we're talking about uh, because it's a, it involves a, one of the guys that's uh, helped and contributed into the writing of steel Panther. If, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken, but this is a band called the Thornbirds, and it was a really cool. I mean, I went on and checked out a bunch of videos and you have all the right chords, you know, as, as a musician, you, you, you have those chords that, uh, are those, they're Beatlesque, but smart pop. Like how would, how would you, but, but then you had a grunge, uh, a bit of a grunge vibe to it as well. Um, tell me a little bit about the Thornbirds because I know that uh, your your Who's drummer, short hair guy. Yeah, well, I don't know who that guy was, but he could fucking sing. I'll tell you that. You got he got a band short singer. <laughs> but uh, you had you had Darren. Uh, your or, I'm sorry, Sticks. Uh, that was your drummer from from that band, as well as Dean Cameron. And has he Dean did. was Dean in that band or or how Dean did that Cameron all work in- out? Yeah, Dean Cameron was in that band. Are you, are you do you know Dean? Um, I I think we've probably, you know, passed in the night and passed at the at the Viper Room, probably watching your band. And uh yeah, Dean, but I, I don't know. Yeah, Dean was in, in that band. And you know, a lot of people don't know this unless they dig really deep, but but uh Dean is a very, very talented musician and he's a talented, he's written movies, he's been in movies, he does a lot of uh, a lot of uh TV stuff now uh, as well. And um, Dean played bass in the Thornbirds. And Dean, when we were doing uh, the first couple records, uh, Dean, I co-wrote a couple songs with Dean. And one of the one of the songs for Steel Panther fans off the first record that Dean co-wrote with me was "Girl from Girl from Oklahoma," which is one of our popular songs off of the first record. And um, Dean came to me and he said, "Hey, you know, let's write a song together." And I said, "Yeah, come on over." So, and I don't, you, I don't normally co-write with people because it, I, I just don't like when, when I get together with somebody and I write and we're sitting in the same room, I always feel like there's too much pressure to come up with something right there. And I always feel like a, whatever I'm going to come up with right there is going to not be as good as if I just like let it come to me in my own time. But when I wrote with Dean, it was really cool. Like he came, he came over and he had the chorus for, for, uh, this song girl from oklahoma which is come on pretty baby suck my balls all night right and i thought it was really funny and it was also very much in line with um with it sounded yeah. similar to uh more than words right and yeah i mean I, a, a few of your songs have certain nods i say you pay homage a little bit to 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 a few bands right so yeah. that that and that was the goal of course on the first record more than any record we were like we were we wanted to and you know g- capture capture the essence 
of what made some of those songs cool, you know, like like Bon Jovi and More Than Words and and you know, of course, White Snake and 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 uh, Def Leppard. There are certain songs that sound you know have a Def Leppard vibe. And uh, of course, when Dean came over, we we wrote that song uh, in about an hour, and uh, that was one of the last songs that we wrote for the first record, and uh, it came out great. And it's still a song that we do a lot, quite quite a lot. And uh, fan favorite. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's a fan favorite. And and then on the second record, Dean also uh, helped me write um, the first song on the record, which is Supersonic Sex Machine, and and the int- intro to it. I think Dean, the entire intro to Supersonic Sex Machine, which is the story of the Supersonic Sex ma- Sex Machine. Dean I was going to say, that what's that about? Okay. <laughs> it's pretty self-explanatory. It's, just lay it right out there. Yeah, right. It, it. But it's, it's great. Dean Dean is a, a really, really funny guy and a great, very talented dude. And I, and I love him very much. He's great. Cool. I, I always tell people that are listening to the show, I say, whatever band you're playing in now, be cool with them. Try not to split up over musical differences. Try not to hate each other's guts. Musical differences, I mean, you end up hating yeah. each other's guts. Try not to, because those same guys that you're playing, guys and gals that you're playing with right now, they will lead you to your next gig. And apparently, Dean Cameron led you or sort of opened the door to your acting career because you were starring in a play called Rockalypse Now. And this was one well, of his plays. And are, are, Did you get your SAG card from that? No, I, you know, I, I, I don't even know if I have my sad guard still, but th- I think I did, I did one acting. I think I was only in that play for like one night and then Dean fired me, but <laughs> no, I mean, I did, I've done certain things with Dean, 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 you know, whenever Dean, you know, if Dean ever wants me to do something, I'm there. And, and Dean, you know, we just did a, uh, it's funny cause Dean just directed Corey Taylor's new video for his new song and we, and Steel Panther was in the video. And this is just like last Saturday. So we all went out and uh, we all were together, me and me and uh, Sticks It In Ya and Dean and Corey Taylor was there. And um, our, an old friend of ours named Zach Throne. Do you know Zach Throne? No, no, no. But it makes sense that that uh, he was there for his own video. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, but, Dean, but Dean, Dean's phenomenal. He's awesome. And, uh, but, but well, you, you just said something that, that I agree with 100%. Like when, you, when you're with, you know, for, for us as a band, you know, in Steel Panther, we have, uh, we've been fortunate because we've, we've had a chemistry from the beginning. And um, even though we're all very different people, and I'm sure you'll agree that whatever band you're in, there's always going to be things that you disagree about and you, there's a, it's very easy to butt heads at times. And um, there, you have to get past that somehow. And as a band, Steel Panther, we've even had like band therapy where we learned, sat and like learned how to like talk and communicate with each other. And it's so important to, to, to be able to recognize when, you, when you've got something as a band and you've got a chemistry and you've got something special because, you know, all of our fans, you know, they, they love the band and they come and see us time and time again. And I think a lot of people would be really bummed out if Steel Panther broke up. And the one thing that we've all agreed on, you know, even from the beginning was let's just stay together. Like we'll work, we'll work out all the, uh, all the details as we go, but let's just stay together because we've got something special and we've got a chemistry and even though we might disagree on certain things, like as long as we can learn how to communicate and respect each other's differences of opinion, we can continue to to entertain people and people and our fan base will grow and our fans will stay loyal. And they, and they have through the years. So it's been really great. I like that. Well, do, you, do you think it's actually will give you more mileage if you broke up really dramatically and then reformed? Or is it cooler to have just just to stick it on through the whole way out, whether you have you know uh, people passing away or this or that, but but if, you, if you're basically just a band that toes the line and you always stay together, is that better? Does that give you more credibility than if you have this dramatic breakup? Because so many bands have the dramatic breakup, and then it's you know then they get back together for the reunion tour, and it's always a little bit. You ever get the feeling you've been cheated? You know? Yeah, exactly. How many bands have broken? Think about all the bands 
all your favorite bands that have broken up over the years and you've gone and and it's and it's been a big dramatic breakup and you, everybody waits for the reunion and what happened with the you know look at Van Halen and Van Halen Van Halen never got back together with all the original guys ever and that I think made sucks. a lot of Van Halen fans that, that, go. That, that, that's tough. Yeah, I waited for thirty-five fucking years, and now it's never going to happen. And mm. look at Guns N' Roses. Like, I mean, it, it's still, it's like they, they were they were a band for three what three years or something. I mean, like the original lineup was like a few years. I mean, I feel like you know, if if you're going, if, you know, you owe it to your fans to overcome your own petty differences and your egos because this is what this is why so many bands break up like i don't like you man this is my fucking band and, and you know you can go suck an egg and like people break up and the singer and the guitar player don't get off and listen we we uh we know that we have something cool and that our fans love it and it's i think it would be fucked up to break up and and we have too we have too much cool stuff with with our band and we get along too well and we have too much to offer as a band to break up at this point and that doesn't mean that that we can't do things on the side if we want or whatever but but i enjoy, i personally feel like we've got such a great thing together uh, everybody knows their role you know um everybody yeah. takes care of a different role in the band and we're able to come together and make records that we all dig you know and nobody feels like they you know, there, I've been in bands where where there's more than one songwriter and there's just like that and the band lasts six months and you fucking break up. And sometimes you have to have a band where everybody knows their role and everybody brings something to the table, but but they're like, it's like a puzzle. You fit together and the end result is stuff that everybody, you know, nobody, you know, everybody works at their own pace. Some people yeah. do more than others and some people, um, it doesn't mean everybody doesn't have value that they bring to the band. And our band at the end of the day is um, when we go on stage together, we we bring it. We bring a great live show and we bring songs that our fans really love. And uh, and at, I don't I hope that we never stop playing. I mean, I know that we will at some point because one of us is going to die from uh, like a drug overdose or, a, a, you know, our, the, our hip is going to break and we're just gonna, not going to be, gonna be the hip. hip. I think it's definitely going to be the hip. I think you guys are immune to the drugs. But the thing yes. is, we that's our exclusive. That's our takeaway. That's our soundbite. Uh, Satchel has seen that the band Steel Panther will never break up. And I really hope this is not one of those Lindsey Graham moments where you can say, you know, I, I bring you back on tape, you know, in a year from now you go, we will never break up. And then like, what was I saying back then? No, this is yeah. something... Do not Lindsey Graham this one, all right? I need you to be there with that one. And with that, we are going to take a little commercial break because right now, folks, we have to do this from time to time. We have the uh, System 12, 12-week 12 challenge coming up. Uh, we are hanging out here in the trenches, our 50th episode with Satchel from the band Steel Panther. You are all in the chat. Enjoy this for the next 60 seconds, and we will be right back. Thank you, Vic. Hello, Ryan Roxy here. And we know you're excited to begin the System 12 Guitar Method. And to provide you with some added incentive, we are presenting you with a challenge, the System 12 12-week 12 Guitar Challenge. The entire System 12 team will be involved in helping you stay focused and stay inspired as we coach you through each System 12 lesson. Each week, we will release an insider's video that will give you goals, tips, and tricks on how to make the most out of each lesson. We will aim to create a community of encouragement and support as we will all be learning together. Do you accept the challenge? Will you make it to the 12th week? We know you will. And by the end of the challenge, you'll be playing the guitar just like you've always wanted to. Join now, prepare yourself, and let's get rolling. Because the System 12 12 Week Guitar Challenge is coming your way. And there I am, back. Quick, quick outfit change and everything like that. So that, that, that's uh, guitar lessons that I, of uh, course, that I teach. Obviously, I don't have to tell you about it because you've taught guitar lessons at GIT back in the day. How do you feel about it? And uh, please don't put your uh, guitar lesson course out just yet because you know you're gonna you're gonna completely trump mine. You'll, you'll oh, I don't know about me. that. You'll swamp me on that one. But actually, I think I have a a, a pretty good system to. Uh, 
learn fundamental guitar and sort of go from the basics and start playing songs, basically your first lesson. How do you feel okay. about that, people learning? What, what What is one of the most important things that you could maybe pass the torch of rock on to up and coming guitar players? What would you, what would advice would you give them? Oh, like if you're, if you're just starting out or if you've been just playing starting for a while? Out, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> well, I mean, it's, it's a great time to start learning guitar because there's a lot of, a lot of ways you can learn guitar. There's obviously, you know, a lot of stuff online. There's your method. Um, yeah. I think it's really important. I think it's a great thing to, to, uh, to have a, you know, a method or, and, and because if you just dive into it and you don't really know where to start there, there can be so much coming at you that you don't really know where to go. So, so, you know, if you have something like system 12, where it starts you with the stuff that you really need, like for a foundation with, you know, yeah. uh, chords and how they go together and, and, power you know, chords, you you know, know power so chords. Something. Yeah. I mean, start starting simple is a really good thing. And, um, but you know, there, there's a, there's a lot of great ways to learn how to play guitar. Now you can go on YouTube. There's a lot of inspiration out there. Obviously we there's so many great guitar players that have uh, existed throughout time. And, and, you know, you can also take lessons from people on zoom. Now I've been giving zoom lessons, uh, for the, for the last couple months. And, and, uh, there's a lot, you know, you can you can sit you know anywhere in the world you can sit on a zoom lesson and ask you know specific questions and so people can be at any level and uh and have lessons all over the world now which is great um that, that access is really important isn't it because i i do the same thing on on my site uh w that where you know you can have you can book a lesson as you said earlier, Zoom is always a little bit, uh, it's, it's a little bit challenging, but we can get it done it and it does work because that accessibility is finally there because we have the time now. You know? Absolutely. And, you know, it, you know, I find that, you know, it's not even, it, I mean, it's one thing, it's cool to be in a room and actually play with people. And that's, that's great. But, but you can do a lot through a Zoom lesson. You can, you can get a lot of points across um, a lot of, uh, you can really help a guitar student a lot by teaching them ways that they can actually improve on their own, right? So like, so a, a guitar player isn't just going to improve by jamming with me or being on a lesson with me. I want them to like go away from that lesson and uh, be able to, you know, show them things that they can sit and, and you know, learn you know, daily and, and, and maybe use their time wisely so that they can improve faster than otherwise. Because I know that when I was a kid, I used to practice for a long, long time. And I yeah. probably could have gotten just as good in half the amount of time if I would have been more focused on the right things to practice. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of great ways to learn guitar now. And, and uh, there's a lot of really good, good guitar players out there that, uh, that, that I learn about every day. So it's, it's fun. It's fun to, meet new kids that are up and coming and, and those uh, 11 year old I, that come up and <laughs> that's that, 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 that smoke it on stage at a steel panther show i mean yeah, whether yeah. you take a lesson from myself or whether you take a lesson from satchel or whether you just go on to that youtube channel the advice that i try and give people is on youtube take advantage of that player because not a lot of people know on that little circle dial is in the settings you can slow the video down to keep in the same pitch but go down to three quarter speed Honestly, if I would have had that when I was trying to learn, you know, eruption or trying to learn some sort of Randy Rhodes solo, uh, any Randy Rhodes solo for that matter, it would have saved a lot of vinyl. It would have, you know, and it would have saved me hours of frustration. So take advantage of that speed control. That's that's one thing that I tell people. You yeah, know? I didn't I didn't actually know you could do that. That's really cool. That's, uh, you didn't? There's, no, I didn't know that. That's awesome. I mean, there, there's definitely things about technology now that make learning the guitar much much e much easier and uh and you know just just being able to hear the notes and to be able to see you know video of somebody's hand the way they are holding their hand the way they're holding their pick those are all things that are really important um one thing that e even just talking about it right now like when you're starting out on guitar one thing that i did when i was a kid i i practiced for three years and then i had to change my technique because i was i was very uh tight and I had to learn how to like, just, you know, be relaxed when I play. And that's, I think that's a very important thing with any instrument, like just being able to play relaxed because you want to be able to play for hours at a time without getting tension in your shoulders and things like that. But um, those are all important things to focus on when you're learning how to do 
anything, whether it's a golf swing or a, or a, hey, there's that rat again. Um, I know. Or, or, or guitar. I think they're planning or, a coup, those rats. They're definitely sure, planning sure something. I, I'd watch your back, man. No doubt about it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why so, I feed them well. All right. Well, you know, I see that you have a lot of guitars and it's not that none of them that you are um, selling right now. Those are all obviously your guitars. Is there a go-to guitar that you have? I mean, I, I have my uh, nice little Cherry Burst 78 Gold Top or uh, Cherry Burst Les Paul. Which one's well, your go-to? It's not the, I, I don't think it's the uh, Shocker. Uh, I, I have I have my own model yeah. of guitar. This is like a Satchel model Charvel. And yeah. I've got a green one over there, or over there, right there. There it is. And is um, but these these guitars are are uh, they're they're rock guitars. So the, is, is is that the is that the Charvel? It's the that... Charvel Satchel model. Oh, I love and, it. Um, I love it. Cause... And it's great. They, they've got a Fishman Fishman uh, Fluence pickups, and these things are. It's the first active pickup I've ever used. I just say they're active, yeah. And and they sound amazing. And uh, that's, it's really my favorite guitar I've ever played. And, uh, and it sounds great. And um, the Charvels, you know, the necks are always easy to play. So even, even the stuff, you can pick one of these up out of Guitar Center or wherever they sell them. And they're, uh, they're very easy to play and they, and they sound great. And I know most guitar players don't want to fight the guitar neck when they're playing. So these things are very, very, you know, the action is low and, and they, uh, and they sound great. So that's, You're that's, right, Georgia. This is guitar porn. Um, let me ask you this: I'll get, Georgia. I'll get, I'll go a little bit down that dark web area. Is this, uh, is what are your next? Uh, you have any scalps next? Because I know you're. Oh, those rats sound. Those rats are actually talking now. Well, they learn yeah, to impersonate yeah. voices. And stuff. They do. Well, that's how they get fed. That's how they get fed. They pretend smart. to be dogs, and that's then you think, smart. is this a dog or a rat? It sure acts like a rat, but it barks like a dog. Be, being a being an Ingve fan, uh, do, you, do you have any guitars that have scallop necks? And and for those of you that are keeping score at home, scallop necks actually are like. How would you describe a scallop neck, Satchel? Um, well, it's it's like um, you basically if you it's like taking a uh, a sandpaper and just sanding it down. So it's like a it's got an arch in between yeah. the in between the frets. Um, does it, that make you play I, faster? It does not make me play. It feels weird to me. Yeah, I don't no. personally like it that much, but uh, it's if somebody wants to see the hammer. Okay, this is the. I'll show you this one real quick. All right, cool. This is the first oh, guitar geez. I ever had. It's it's a. I bought this. I don't even know, like forty years ago or something. Like it's a hammer, yeah, and I, um, hammer. I, I I owned a hammer once. Is that a, is that kind of like is before Steve Stevens? It looks a little like the Steve Stevens model, but it actually has. It's yes. It's, it's killing, and it's, man. And I loved it because it was zebra, and it's got these three pickups, you know, two pickups right next to each other. That's a humbucker, and that's a single coil. And um, I broke the neck on this thing so many times oh, from man. throwing it around my back. I, I I don't even know if I can play it anymore, but but it's a uh, looks cool as but, fuck. I yeah, it, it is. It is cool, and it's small. It's a three quarter scale, I think, too. So kind of strange. I had but, a, a Michael Shanker uh, Flying V by Hamer. That was the one. And the reason, the only reason I bought a hammer was because I was such a big, such a huge, um, Alice Cooper fan or not Alice Cooper fan. I was such a huge cheap trick fan. And, um, my phone's going crazy a little bit. Um, but I was such a big cheap trick fan and Rick Nielsen used to use hammers. And that was the, oh. that was the reason why I ended up getting it or actually I, an ex-girlfriend bought it. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't even realize because when I got into cheap trick and I love cheap trick by the way, and I love Rick Nielsen, one of the best songwriters ever. And, uh, great guitar player. And he, he's also one of those guys that is proof to me. And I think it's really cool when you see somebody who he, he was never competing with the Ingves and the Eddie Van Halen's. He didn't give a shit. Right. Like no, he was like, I'm doing my own thing and I'm going to do it great. And he did it so great that, that it was inspiring. And, and I think that's what everybody should do when they pick up an instrument. Like, don't worry about like, cause it's not, it's not a competition, right? Ultimately it's about you finding your own thing and doing it really well. And that's, you know, Rick Nielsen to a T, like he went, I'm going to do what I'm going to wear. Everybody else had long hair. He was like, screw it. I'm going to have short hair. You know, I'm going to wear a baseball cap backwards and, and, and I'm, and I'm, I'm going to play a four neck guitar. Like he was awesome. He just did his own thing and he wrote great songs and, and uh, he's still doing his own thing, which is awesome. 
No doubt. No doubt. We've had him on the podcast. We love him, Rick Nielsen. Everyone, anyone that knows uh, about me, they know what a huge Cheap Trick fan I am. Uh, you know, yeah. Robin Zander, aside from Eric Dover and Michael Steele, probably one of the best uh, singers out there, of course. I agree. Know. He's he's in my in my list. I, I there's, a, there's a list of my top five favorite singers in the world. And I, I can't ever nail it quite down to, to have them all be in the same list at the same time. But he is one of my top five, for sure. Favorite singers of all time. And, and I've never heard him sing a bad note. He's amazing. Satchel, I need to have you come on for a part two at one point because I'm I, I seriously have so much to talk about with you. I haven't even got into your scratch to sniff to your, in the surface of your equipment because I want to talk about your effects and stuff. But I, we also have this part where I do not want to deny the people from asking their questions. And honestly, all week, this was what made my gig so easy this week is that I didn't have to do that much research, even though I ended up doing it and finding out a lot of being inspired as I am every single week with our guests. Um, but these, these, uh, rabid fans like your, uh, like your rat that you have at your guitar center house, um, they want to know a certain couple of questions. And so we have sure. a part of the show that we call let the people speak. So Vic, can we run that set? Okay, so this is going to be rapid fire. All right, rapid you fire, it. and you and you can be a full on satchel. You, uh, you know, you can be because you 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 know what you've almost given us too much uh, meaningful content <laughs> with this podcast. That, was, you that had, was never my goal. Sorry, I know we kind of just like by happenstance actually got something that's meaningful on this fiftieth, really nice fiftieth episode of In the Trenches. But here we go. Our first question comes from at Heidi underscore Cotton Satchel. What is your favorite Steel Panther solo to play live? Oh God, that's a tough one. Uh, just off the top of my head, um, I'm going to say Glory Hole because it, it it changes keys every other bar. It's not easy to do, but it's a fun solo. It's a fun solo. But they're all fun. Yeah, I like this all. You're kind of talking about a real glory hole too. You know, it's like you're yeah. kind of describing what it is to be, you know, it's not easy to do. You're right. It's Very quickly, we'll move on. And this is actually just causing strife, I feel. Um, at Alex underscore STR00 would go, would you ever join the Alice Cooper band? Um, I don't I don't think I could. And I'm not good enough. Bullshit. And it's, and it's more fun for me being in Steel Panther. Like if I joined Alice Cooper's band, their Tommy Henriksen would be telling me what to do and cracking the whip. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm better off being in Steel Panther, I think. A lot of alphas. A lot of alphas. Yeah, but, everybody, it lot. It, it, but like you said, everybody gets along because everybody knows their lane. Everybody, you know, yeah. stays in their lane. We all know whose name is up on the, on the uh, marquee. And that's why I think that band, uh, gets along that lineup has gotten along uh as well as it has we're the longest running alice cooper touring lineup since the original band how about that that's great that's amazing <laughs> here we go another rapid fire at lynn zzz seven eight nine six is 24 too late to get good at the guitar i'm just, are you kidding it's it's yeah, the guitar playing is one of those things where you you you're going to keep on practicing and you're going to keep on wondering when you're going to be good like you never quite go am i you never know when you, you you're always going to be trying to get better so i'm 54 it, and i'm still i want to ask exactly. the same question you're still gonna be like when when am i going to get good at this thing it's as soon as you get good at one thing you're on to the next thing and you're like trying to get better at that and it's always always a challenge it's one of the fun things about the guitar it's uh it's it's a great instrument it's a great instrument so yes, you're, you're still young kid, 24, you're fine. 24. I know at one point we all thought that, Oh, it's over at 24. Yeah. I remember I, at one point when I was doing the, the Tal Bachman record with Lance, who you, who, uh, we, we went to Hawaii to, uh, make the album. And it was the first time I ever saw Hanson. It was the first time I ever saw a vi music video came on while we were yeah. in Maui. And here Lucky I was like, you. dude, I'm over. I'm like 30 years old. This, <laughs> yep. I'm done. It's over. So um, at Bear, well, what was that? At Bear Ego One, where does Satchel get his clothing from? Well, I get a lot of custom made pants from all over the world. And um, and I usually just get t-shirts and, and rip them up on my own. Because, you know, that's 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 heavy metal, right? That's that's rock and roll. Like get, get a t-shirt, tear it up with some scissors. But spandex pants, you know, in order I'm, to have I'm the pants fit. that right now. 
you yeah, know, tight there pants are very important, you know, but, but, and I also, my thing is I like to wear cowboy, cowboy boots on stage. That's my thing. And I've had the same pair of boots for a while. I wear them until they wear out. I just like black boots. I think they look I don't good. know anybody else that ever likes to wear cowboy boots or a top hat. I have no idea who that would be. Um, other than you, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Our next question, <laughs> rapid fire at any band from the nineties. And I'm not sure if all these are real because they, this just seems like they're stirring the pot. How does it make you feel knowing that you've had more success than most of the bands that you have covered? Well, you know, it's, that's funny. I, I don't, I don't really think about, I don't think about how much success uh, I've had compared to other bands. Cause there's a lot of bands that have sold way more records than we have and, and, and made way more money. But I think, I think the goal for me is to just keep my band together as long as possible and have fun because, because, you know, everybody has different, uh, has a different view on what success is, whether it's, record sales or money or Ferraris. And I don't have a Ferrari, so I don't know. I don't know. For me, I just want my band to stay together. I want to be able to keep on doing shows. And um, I, I do, you know, I do think that there's a lot of bands that have broken up over the years. And I, I just hope my band can continue to play and continue to entertain people because to me, that's that's success. I want to, I want to continue to have fun and play music. Don't and, start um, backpedaling. You already promised me earlier in the podcast that Steel Panther's never going to break up. That was my big. We're never going to break up. No, <laughs> okay, I mean we're, we're, we are never ever going to break up ever. <laughs> All right, I'll move on because I got my soundbite with that one. That one, the blabbermouth might actually po post up. Um, I promise. At jukebox or or brave words, I love brave words as well. At jukebox hero eighty one, what effect is it? Kind of a twofold question. What effect has EVH had on your plane? And at Tommy K four, did you ever? think about playing a Frankenstrap rep replica on stage? Uh, well, you know, I, I did play in a Van Halen tribute band and I had, and I painted my own Frankenstrap replica. It was not spot on, but it was pretty <laughs> good considering I'm terrible at painting guitars. But uh, Eddie Van Halen has had an effect on every guitar player since he came out, every rock guitar player to, to one degree or another. And, and, you know, he was a massive influence on, on on everybody in in ways that we that we didn't even realize i mean he, his his you know his fire with with his his rhythm guitar playing was great his songs were great his lead guitar playing was obviously great and um he will always be an influence on guitar you know and 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 i i love him and everybody loved him and and uh and every time i sit down and write a song I'm sure he he influences me in some way because he was sort of way, he was yeah. great. He was he was a guitar hero. He was the quintessential guitar hero. Yeah. You know, when he came out, everybody went, well, "How do you how do you get cooler than that on rock guitar? Yeah. You can't. You can only just do your own thing and hope that you you know can cop some of his coolness and yeah. take it to another level or take it to a different place because." Eddie, Eddie Van Halen was as cool as it got. As it got so. When players like Joe Satriani are, are completely in awe of Eddie, it's it's easy to see why everyone was. I mean, I, yeah. I had a band called Fair Warning. One of my first bands I ever put together was called Fair Warning. And, yeah. you know, it was no mistake. There was no mistake about where that name came from. Right. Um, this one's going to uh, sort of cause this next question is going to uh, focus on a more of the acting uh, sort of part of we were talking about you being in Rockalypse now, even if it was for just one show. Uh, this is from at Keither Sutherland with so much acting in the live show. How do you deal with not being taken seriously as a musician? That's from at Keith. Well, that's an inter interesting, interesting question, Keeper. Um, I mean, that's, that's a very interesting question because how, I mean, I, I do wonder um, what people think we're, we're acting about for one, <laughs> like, like, what are we acting? Do we act? Are, what? And a lot of people listen to our music and go, Oh, are these, these guys are a fake band. Are we a fake band? Uh, are, are the song is the subject matter that we write about fake? I don't know. Is it you tell me, I mean, everybody's got their own judgment on, What's a real song? What's a fake song? I don't think it matters as long as you enjoy it. Um, and and I don't think if I don't think I would be able to be in Steel Panther if I gave a shit about whether people took me seriously as a musician or not. <laughs> I do not. I do not care who takes me seriously as a musician or not. I mean, 
I think that if you're a musician and you enjoy Steel Panther, that's great. If you're a musician and you don't like us, that's cool too. I don't care. I mean, I think that's one thing about being a musician. You have to find your own thing and you have to do it to the best of your ability. And that's what we do in Steel Panther. And we write songs that we dig for people that, you know, we find our own audience. And, and just like you, if you're a musician, you have to find your own audience too. So there's gonna be people that are musicians that do not take me seriously at all and will not listen to me because they will not, they think that I'm not serious. And that's cool. I'm sure there were people that felt that way about Frank Zappa as well. And yeah. they were denying themselves a lot of cool because Frank Zappa did so much cool shit. So, so much cool shit. And, well, this, and so everybody's got different stuff to offer. So this is my description, if I can, is this is sort of my opinion about, um, about Steel Panther. You guys talk the talk, but you walk the walk. There's no doubt. There's, there's no musician that can come see the band and for one, not be blown away by the musicianship because that's where you walk the walk, but then not be blown away by just the sheer entertainment of it. Because I, I honestly, if you take things too seriously in this world, then you need to go to see a Steel Panther show. Don't you think? I mean, or, or should they not? Would they be too afraid yeah, I, with this, I, this cancel culture that we live in? Well, you know, thank you, Janie Wilde, by the way. I appreciate that compliment. And um, I, I think that, you know, we started as a live band. And like I said earlier, we, we're, we're always going to be a live band first. And so even though there's a lot of people that get into our music and our records, which I take a lot of pride in, I want to write good songs that are hooky and catchy. But, but seeing us live is, I think, a, a, if you ever have a chance to see us live, that's where we shine. We've always been a live band. And for us, entertaining people was always the goal from the get-go. Before we ever had an original song, it was always, we're gonna do anything we can to make people have a good time. And that's, you know, there's, you know, that's why we'll cross any line. We can be very offensive at times, but we're also equally offensive to all people. And our live shows are always fun. And and I have never been on stage. It's very rare that I leave the stage with Steel Panther having not had fun. And not a lot of bands can say that, especially after being together for, you know, 25 years. We have been, oh, yeah. we've, we've, we always have fun on stage together and I don't ever want to phone it in and nobody in this band phones it in. We always go on stage and have a great time. And I think that a lot of bands uh, would, would be lucky to be able to say that a lot of bands, butt heads and a lot of bands don't have fun. A lot of bands do phone it in. So whenever you see steel Panther, you know, we're not phoning it in because you can't fake that shit. So, well, in 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 keeping with seeing the band live, seeing 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 Steel Panther live, um, I want to break away from let the people speak real quick, just to talk about because people can see you live. You're one of the few bands that has been touring, and you've been you're out there, and you're about ready to embark on the heavy metal rules, right? Do you have a heavy? Um, I know that uh, is, is your staff. Are you coming off of coffee break? Do you need to? Yeah, my staff. Up? My staff is telling me that I got to go feed the rats. Oh boy. <laughs> It's going to happen, oh, but it I wanted to talk happen. a little bit about just the uh, heavy metal rules tour. You can tell uh, the folks that are in the chat and you know what, we might have to break this up into a part two and have you come back at another point. Cause I know I've taken your, a lot of your time. It's yeah, been I'm happy amazing. to come. I'm happy to come back. Right. I'm just telling you. Anytime. Okay. Perfect. So. Perfect. So just, I, I want people to get hyped up about this upcoming tour when you're starting it. What, what should people expect of it and where are you guys going to be actually playing during these times? Well, we've got we've got a few dates coming up. We're, we're playing in Nashville at a place called the Marathon, which is an indoors place. But right now, it's a it's the wild west of you know of rules and regulations, and there's a lot of places that you can't play. Uh, but we're we're going to go play as many shows as we can, and hopefully, hopefully, people will start to open up a little bit, and bands will start to be able to tour again. Uh, but when we go tour, we're going to do exactly what we've always done. We're going to put on a great show, and we're going to play stuff off our new record play stuff off our older records and put on a great, a great show. Cause that's what we love to do. And, and uh, you're going to get to, you know, see us do our thing. And if you've never seen steel Panther, you should absolutely, absolutely go see us before one of us dies of a drug overdose or a broken hip, which could very well happen. 
Um, but we'll <laughs> but we'll do we'll do the same great show we've always been doing. It's our show is always different and it's always fun and uh, and we can't wait to go out and play and do what we've done for many years and and uh, and and bring it bring it live like we always do. Well. I, I just have, uh, apparently our, our producer Vic has gone crazy on the rules of heavy metal. I don't know where these all came from, but rule 17, there's always time for another guitar. So there's not a lot of time for us to ask questions though, because we got to get Satchel back to feeding the rats and probably uh, his afternoon shift at guitar center where he That's has, right. has been coming to us live. So there's just a, a couple more questions. And then obviously people want to get in touch with you. You don't have your own instagram or, or or do you because i know i could only see at the uh on instagram it was at steel panther do you have your own is it, or no, is it I, I don't private? i don't have my own i used to at one point but i i got away from it because i i got so busy with the guitar center but um <laughs> but yeah it's uh but but we do we do we do have you can uh go on steelpantherrocks.com and check out all of our social media links on that and uh and we've got uh, we've got a website that, that gives us all gives you all the tour dates that we've got coming up, and we've got we've got dates in 2021. Hopefully, those won't get canceled. And we've got stuff in the summer and festivals in the summer as well. We have to thank everybody that's been hanging out in the chat for for the whole time. They've been great. There's so many more questions that they want to get to, but honestly, I've got verbal uh, sort of confirmation that Satchel will come back for a part two, if that's possible. And Absolutely. And never break up. Steel Panther will never break up. That is uh, the word on the street. That's our headline. Uh, just a really quickly, the one last question from at Chuck Morrison 09. Um, he asked, who has the sexier bass player, Steel Panther or Alice Cooper? And if you oh. don't have proof of that here, I think we have proof of that. Um, there it is. And, and of course, yeah. Vic, you didn't get a shot of Chuck shirtless. So that kind yeah. of discounts him a little bit. Huh? Yeah, I think it depends on uh, on your, it's a taste thing right there. If you're, that, if you're, if you're more well, in the If you go back to that picture, you can see that Chuck Garrick definitely is tasting something. Yeah, um, he's got a big tongue, that's for sure. <laughs> and there's Glenn Sobel in the background there. Um, uh, have you ever jammed with Glenn Sobel? Oh, Glenn, Glenn's awesome, dude. He's a great, great drummer. Yeah, he's awesome. There it is. And uh, and then our and then our final. I don't even know if this is a question. This is from uh, at Miley Cyrus. Um, basically, I'd like my huskies back. So. Oh yeah. Know. Well, I don't know where they are anymore. So that's unfortunate. <laughs> it's a, you've had so many of those guests come up. Um, and we're going to break into all of that, of course, um, on part two. But Satchel, I will uh, basically let you go and feed those rats that know how to impersonate dogs. Everybody yeah, that's yeah. been in our chat. Uh, right now awesome I, I honestly i could stay here all day and talk with our good friend the guitar player i can say friend now because we are building this Absolutely. sort of i almost feel like i'm a drummer now trying to bring all these you know because drummers always get along and it's usually guitar players have this sort of a little bit of like huh, huh, huh. but I, I feel in this in this little space we have a nice sort of you know, friendship, kinship, yeah, if you great. will, among guitar players, right? It's it's been great, great talking with you, Ryan. I'm I'm glad that that you have me on, and I'm happy to come back anytime you want me. Cool. I want to hype up, you know, your your because there was a whole section that we had about your uh, signature pedals and and all the controversy that they've caused, but they've actually, you know, actually really gotten very popular because of the controversy and you know just titles like the pussy melter poontang boomerang and of course uh look at that and then, and then i think there was even one with a uh a uh, rectum yes but yeah that's a popular wow. so you know all these things we can talk about next time but in the meantime if you want to check out uh satchel and his band steel panthers socials vic do you have those socials to bring up real quick so that everyone that's watching can see and then if people are listening uh satchel can you say which he does not have them. Okay, so it's S. <laughs> I'm getting a big no. He don't have them, but that's at Steel Panther on Instagram, right? Uh, I'm not. I, I don't even know. I think it's. I think it is. I think if you go to SteelPantherRocks.com, that all of our socials are linked to that, and uh, occasionally we do do uh, live streams on our uh, on our on our uh, Instagram, and it's completely naked. So. That's perfect. Well, yeah. you actually, that was, that, 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 uh, dovetails into the question. Do you ever go commando on stage? I think that, uh, Jason Every time. Press asked that earlier and yeah. you kind of skated the issue. Do you go commando? Always. Every time. Are you, are you commando right now? Be honest. Uh, yeah, always. I don't even own underwear. 
Why would I? You said you had Hot Topic underwear. See, this is how I, I know, know these things. So you have. I borrowed those though. I borrowed those. <laughs> That's the twist. That's that the, twist. the twist. You're, you're almost like anonymous on CNN who lied boldface to, uh, I don't know. I've been watching too much CNN lately. Um, enough of those references. <laughs> <laughs> We've had Satchel, lead guitarist of Steel Panther, the band that will never break up, and the greatest band of rock and roll. Uh, go check them out. And their daily, is it a daily sort of um, uh, every, public announcement that you every guys day. do? Every single day till the end of the pandemic in 2028. Is today your day right now if you go on and check it out? I think it is. Okay. All right. Satchel, it's been a pleasure. Everybody that's been in the chat, thank you very much. Um Man, this is our 50th episode. I, I, awesome. I, I did the uh, music video outside. Didn't really bother us all that much. Um, I guess they wrapped it up. And uh, Vic Chalfant, thank you very much for producing another episode and all 50 episodes. Satchel, it's been great. We'll have you on for part two. In the meantime, check out Steel Panther at any venue uh, near you because they are out there playing live. And folks, you know where to find us every Tuesday in the trenches. Uh, until next time, I'm Ryan Roxy. Enjoy the ride. Bye, Satchel.